Uh, on behalf of President Obama, I'd like to uh, express thanks to the country of Lithuania and its government uh, for sponsoring and hosting the IGF. Uh, it's a difficult undertaking, uh, one that involves some cost, and we're uh, grateful for the excellent organization uh, that uh, we've seen. It's also an opportunity to highlight how the Internet is fueling Lithuania's transformation uh, into a global hub for services and innovation. I'd like to also uh, say a, a personal word of thanks uh, to Marcus Kummer. Uh, Marcus, you have been uh, tireless in uh, keeping the IGF alive and going. Uh, and without you, we, we would not have reached this point. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so let me say a few words about uh, why we're here, uh, why it matters, and what comes next. Uh, fundamentally, the reason that we are here is because the very architecture of the internet itself embodies a mode of social organization, a mode of technical organization, uh, which is um, decentralized, uh, which is cooperative, and which is layered. Uh, and each three of those characteristics are fundamental to the benefits that the Internet has brought. Uh, it fuels the freedom of innovation uh, that uh, uh, enables economic growth. It fuels the freedom of expression that enables social uh, and political growth uh, and the functioning of uh, uh, democratic uh, societies worldwide. Uh, it's especially important uh, for the developing world, and I want to stress this point today, the very open nature of the Internet uh, which is to say the Internet's ability to support innovation without permission, the ability of the, in, uh, the paradigmatic two kids in a garage to create a new service, to create a new application, to create uh, 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 um, uh, a new uh, website, and immediately reach every potential consumer in the world is one of the things that is going to fuel economic growth throughout the developing world uh, and enable access to global markets in a way that has been uh, uh, much more difficult with physical goods and services in the past. So for the developing world, we're seeing this dramatically reduced cost of communication and information uh, bringing uh, increasingly accelerating benefits. Um, uh, uh, local entrepreneurs in the developing world can innovate locally uh, and reach global markets. Um, same thing for educational institutions, the same thing uh, for governments and movements uh, in the nonprofit world. By way of historical example, I think it's important to note uh, that when you compare the pace of innovation that we've seen on the Internet with the pace of innovation that we saw with the previous primary communications network, namely the telephone system, uh, you get a sense of how dramatic the benefits of this architectural model uh, can be. Over the course of decades, the telephone system innovated really just a couple of features, voicemail, uh, call forwarding, caller ID, and that was about it. Uh, the major telecom companies even resisted uh, fax machines um, and uh, the adding of data uh, across the top until uh, they were essentially forced to accept it. Uh, in the Internet, by contrast, where no permission is needed to innovate and deploy new services, we've seen an unbelievable, staggering explosion of uh, new capabilities and tools at uh, ever-reduced uh, prices. Today we have 5 billion mobile phone subscribers. Uh, we have a billion mobile data subscribers. We have more than 2 billion Internet users uh, worldwide. And those numbers uh, are, are, are accelerating um, uh, uh, everywhere, especially in the developing world. So why does this matter? Uh, it matters because uh, the architecture of the Internet uh, needs to be actively maintained. It needs to be actively supported. And as I said, that architecture is decentralized, it is cooperative, it is layered. And the governance institutions, the governance processes, have to mirror and in many ways model that architecture in the way that they function. That's why the IGF is so important, because it is a, a critical element of the multi-stakeholder process applied to the problems of Internet governance. Uh, even the term governance is a little bit strange and, uh, and, and requires uh, some, something of a new definition. Uh, it is, in English anyway, a singular term. What it really needs to be is a plural term, governances. Uh, we need mechanisms and institutions that respect each other and cooperate, each other, uh, cooperate with each other uh, to strengthen their own core competences and to enable others to pursue uh, their uh, distinct roles in that broader ecosystem. Uh, one very encouraging step in this direction, I think, has been the proliferation of regional and national IGFs, which enable us to take the multi-stakeholder uh, model down to the national level and then raise issues up uh, to the global Internet uh, governance forums like we are today. Uh, 
we have to uh, you know, acknowledge at the same time some of the anxieties that go along with this process. Um, uh, governments want and they need and they are entitled to the ability to pursue their public policy objectives uh, uh, on the internet as well. Uh, we also have to recognize that we can't solve all of the problems of the internet uh, in one forum. Not one treaty organization, not one multi-stakeholder forum. Uh, we need multiple institutions. Uh, on the technical side, the Internet Engineering Task Force, the World Wide Web Consortium, the IEEE, the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, uh, ICANN, the IANA, these are all organizations that play specialized roles that have to work in concert with uh, one another. Uh, the critical point uh, is to respect those different roles and to foster cooperation among them. And as I said, that's what the IGF uh, is here to do. Uh, so what next? Well, uh, from the perspective of the U.S. government and the Obama administration, we're strongly committed to maintaining the IGF, uh, to maintaining it in its current form as one key mechanism of Internet governance um, and one that models, as I said, the Internet's decentralized cooperative architecture. Uh, and I want to say in closing that we greatly appreciate Kenya's offer to host the next IGF, and we look forward to seeing everybody there. Thank you very much.